Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. And this one is all about Liverpool transfers or a lack of Liverpool transfers. What is going on at Anfield? So we're just two weeks away from the transfer window closing for the summer. Liverpool season has kicked off in an underwhelming manner, but not a disastrous one. We've drawn at Watford away from home in the opening day of the Premier League. We've won at Hoffenheim, a team that were very good at home last season, of course. We've gone there and beat them by two goals to one. It should have been more, but then again, it should have been, could have been an equaliser there too. So our squad is looking like it's got some holes in it, particularly in the defence and in midfield. You guys have all been telling me this on Instagram and, and on the comments on here time and time again. I mean, we need to sign. We've been doing, I've been doing videos since May, June, and we've been talking about transfers ever since. And I remember in June making a video venting my anger about how we weren't getting any deals done. That was two months ago. And <laughs> you can only imagine how frustrated everyone is now. They were, they were furious back then. That was before Salah came in. Salah is in, Slanky's in, Robertson's in. But now we still don't have the Van Dijk and Cater style of player that we thought we would by now. We thought we'd have the centre-back position boxed off. We thought we'd have another midfielder. We thought maybe we might have an Oxlade Chamberlain or someone of that ilk as well. Turns out we haven't. It turns out we're very light. Turns out we're not quite frankly ready this season for a title challenge, which is so disappointing. It's Klopp's second summer in charge. His third season, you know, if you count the first one where he came in halfway through. So we wanted this one to be the one really. He's already got us in the top four. Now that we're in the Champions League, we should be able to attract the top players. We haven't done that quite yet. We've got Salah, which, as I say, is fantastic. He's looked pretty good so far, bar some unconvincing finishing. But it's infuriating, to be quite honest, that we haven't got a centre-back in, that we haven't managed to make a breakthrough in the top targets, such as Van Dijk and Cater. Now, I made a suggestion a couple of days ago that maybe the fact we hadn't even qualified for the Champions League yet might be a factor. And I've seen some of that on Twitter again today. Um, surely not. Sure. I mean, I know Arsenal had to do this a few times, but... I just feel like that would be such a risk. Why would you want... I mean, is it the fact that... Obviously, Mario Goetze, when we lost the Europa League final, that's when the Goetze deal fell through. Are we in a similar situation? Do these players want to only come if we're in the Champions League? I doubt that. Van Dijk's been unequivocal about the, the fact that he wants to join us. Keita seemingly the same. Is it the fact that it makes the clubs easier to deal with? Does it, are there different clauses? Uh, does, it, does it bring the valuation down? I don't know. Ugh. I can't see that being a reason. It may well be a factor. If it was sort of attracting players like it was with Goethe, then I'd almost understand. But <laughs> there can be no real justification for the fact that we've just come into the season completely underprepared. It's a very Arsenal thing to do. But then the Coutinho situation comes in. Uh, so the latest on that is that another bid is due for Barcelona, 130 million euros. And I'm at the point now where I'm almost resigned to losing him. And I don't know whether I should be because the odds suggest that it's still very 50-50 um, and obviously past sagas like this, obviously Suarez, although that was you know, him binning with Arsenal, you know, they were below Barcelona, this is much more difficult as Steven Gerrard said on BT Sport the other night when he answered my question, thanks very much Stevie, uh, this is very different, the fact that it's, you know, it's the Catalan Giants, it's Barcelona, it's the South American players dream club a lot of the time, his head's been turned, he's, he's acting pretty uh, childishly, he's We've been pretty petulant about it, and it's even talked today that it might go on strike. I know it's. Look, I'm not saying that's true. It's, it's Spanish reports and a lot of a lot of propaganda coming out from from the Barcelona camp, from the sort of regional papers around there, suggesting that a bid might come in again, and you know the player has made his mind up. May well be the case. 118.7 million pounds. The next bid is going to be. Can we turn that down? Is there any replacements? There's only so much I can say on Coutinho. We all know the situation, we've all got our opinions. I think we can get a player as good as him in, so that's why I'm reluctant to sell him, <laughs> as if it's down to me. But is it going to affect the dressing room? Are we going to have him just sat on the bench? Is, there, is he going to be the same? I know we talk about Suarez, I know we talk about the fact that he put in the season of his life uh, after the transfer didn't go through for him to Arsenal, but would Coutinho be the same? Are, are all players like that? Uh, it's a difficult one. I think he is going to go for some reason. Uh, my stance does keep changing on this. I don't want him to go. I don't, I, I don't, it's not, like I said, it's not a personal thing. It's just the fact that we can get anyone in to replace him that's any better. So, moving on to some incomings. Van Dijk, again, Southampton have come out today and reiterated that he's not for sale. I mean, how many more times? Um, 
is this going to happen? How many more times are we going to be shot down? And now he's odds on to stay at Southampton, so not even Chelsea are likely to swoop in and, and get him this time. So, like, that, I mean, this is obviously similar to the Coutinho situation. Are they going to just let him sit on the bench? Are they going to? Is he going to be okay at Southampton for another year? Is he is he going to kick up more of a fuss? It's so identical to the Coutinho situation. I almost just want both deals to go through now, just to just to tie things up a bit because players unsettled at clubs. What's the point? But our defence is horrendous. I'm sorry, Joel Matip is a popular player among Liverpool fans. For me, he's not all that. He really isn't all that. He's not a leader. His positioning was dreadful on Tuesday night. Uh, he's our best centre back, which is quite frightening. We, Lovren was terrible. He shouldn't be anywhere near, you know, our first eleven. Which is why Virgil Van Dijk has to come in. This nonsense about there being no alternatives has to stop as well. We need to know now. There's two weeks to go until the deadline, and we're still no closer to knowing who our centre backs are going to be. Is Van Dijk still on the table? Yes, of course it is. I'm not holding out any hope. I don't think this one's going to happen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've been very confident the whole summer. Um, recent developments have just, you know, completely deflated my confidence. I don't know who's going to come in instead. I've seen Man City link with Johnny Evans today, and uh, you know everyone was laughing at that one. But I was thinking to myself, do you know what? He probably starts for Liverpool. It's, it's got that bad. We need some sensible heads. We need some experienced heads. We need some players that actually know how to position themselves on set pieces. Uh, in open play as well, and doesn't help when you got Moreno at left back, who's just always out of position. It's just a complete shambles at the back. We did well to hang on to that 2-1 win yesterday in Hoffenheim, but it was more by luck than judgment in the end, apart from the, the sort of period in between Trent's goal and sort of the 70 minute mark where we were in control. Um, there were some real flaws on that side. And as far as the midfield's concerned, um, Seri is the man that seems more likely than Cater. And I'm going to shout Lloydy96 from Instagram, who brought this to my attention in the comments earlier on. He's, he's saying that a deal's close, and I have had a look at the papers. And French reports are saying that a deal is close between us and Seri. He's a player that's been linked with Arsenal and a few other Premier League clubs throughout the summer. £22.5 million, I think the figure was. So that seems like a good deal to me. I mean, I, mean, I know very little about Seri. I know. My mates here, Arsenal fans, have sent a bit of him. Uh, they seem to think he'd be perfect for them. If we can get in ahead of them, then that's a great coup. No one reliable has really reported uh, that we, we're close to this one. I know Ed Aarons from The Guardian has said that we're interested, which is great. Um, but, look, I mean, I'm, I'm more confident on him than I am Cater. We've not even had any concrete links yet. I'm so past Cater now, to be honest with you. I know some of the ITKs, as I've said in a couple of videos recently, still think it's on. For me, it's not. Uh, I've got no real insight, but I just can't bring myself to think that him or Van Dijk are going to be at Liverpool now. It's gone on too long. I'm, I'm numb I'm numb to all reports about Van Dijk and Cater now. It really has got that far. Uh, other than that, Insigne is another man linked with Liverpool. Uh, I know Barcelona reportedly, you know, according to reports in Spain, had a bid rejected for him. They might go back in, they're weighing it up. Chelsea are also interested. He seems like someone that would be okay at Liverpool, I think 60 million. Uh, you know, if, if we do sell Coutinho for about double that, then he'd be, you know, one of at least two or three replacements that would come in. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be pretty happy with that. He's a player of, you know, high calibre. Obviously, Chamberlain looks like he's going to go to Chelsea. So, I mean, I, I, I'm just. <laughs> I can't believe we're not getting any real concrete news. Um, is Jurgen Klopp actually going to be happy with this squad? I know a lot of you are going to tell me to calm down, and there's only a couple of you know, a couple of signings are going to come in. Just be patient. I've been patient for a long time. You and a lot of you guys that are sort of FSG out, you guys have been patient for a long time. We should have been ready for this weeks ago. I know it's hard in this market. I know prices are inflated. I know the Neymar stuff has kind of you know brought everything up a bit, but. I can't handle this any longer. You know, we've got Crystal Palace, we've got the second leg against Hoffenheim, we've got Arsenal. All very important games. You know, games we need to be winning, really. If we're going to stay in the title race, if we're going to obviously progress in the Champions League, we need to be strong. And we don't look strong, especially in defence at the moment. So, I want to see some progress. I want your guys' opinions on all of this. Who are we going to, who are we going to sign? Is Van Dijk still on? Is Cater still on? Seri, what are your thoughts on him? Insignia? Uh, I think I saw Luan being linked with us again today, the, the, the Brazilian who was linked with us a few months ago. Nothing concrete, nothing's happening. There's two weeks left. What are we going to do? 
Hope you enjoyed the video guys, please do subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of stuff. Drop a like, share the video for me and follow my other socials if they might say on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. See you next time and I hope by then we've signed someone.